Yeah, it's me. This is exactly the way I plan things. No, I know. I want to talk to Kelly. Why? I can tell her the truth. About everything. Kelly's a pretty sick girl herself. She got hurt in the quake. Yeah. The building she was in fell down, collapsed on her. We had to dig her out. Always the hero, huh? Why don't you tell me what you were going to say? What you started to say that day at the wildlife refuge about the night Channing was killed. Doctor, I can't help you. And you better find one who can. Because I don't feel like dying just yet. Who said you were dying? Hmm. I am. Why don't you just tell me what you know, Peter? No. Only Kelly. Kelly is in surgery right now. She may not live. God. It's tough. Don't forget. If Kelly dies, and if I die, nobody should have been another trip. Not what happened to Channing. Additional victims of the earthquake were admitted to the hospital last night when a fire broke out along the Upper Riviera section at Los Altueras and Mission Road and destroyed four homes. Oh, here's Cece Capwell now. Excuse uh, me, I'm Mr. sorry. Capwell. Not now. Uh, my father's very upset because his daughter is undergoing surgery at the moment. I'm very sorry to hear that. This has been a tragic time for many people. Could you please tell us what's happened to your sister? Um, she was in a building when it collapsed. She was buried under a lot of rubble. And what kind of chance did they give her? I'm sorry, that's all I can tell you right now. Excuse me. Fox. The daughter of C.C. Capwell. Her name, too, will join the growing list of victims of this tragic earthquake. Haven't we had any news at all? Not yet. <laughs> Look, she's been in there too long, Dad. Mason, can't you find something out? Well, I can try, Dad. I'm sure they would have told us if they'd heard anything by now. Mr. Capwell, good. You're here. Dr. How is she? Well, right now, the emergency crews are working on her, but I'm sorry. The, the damages are quite extensive. She has severe internal injuries. I mean, they're going to be working on her for another hour, at least. Well, she's going to be all right, isn't she? Mr. Capwell, I would very much like to say yes, but at this point, I'm not sure, okay? Montclair, you better damn well be sure. That's my daughter in there. Dad, they're doing everything they can. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's okay. Forget it. Um, can you help me, please? I'd like to know about Kelly Capwell. Do you know what her condition is? I'm sorry. She's still in surgery, but we don't have a report on her condition. I see. Um, could you please tell me where the hospital chapel is? Yes, straight Dr. that way. Make a left turn. It's the second door. Thank you. Doctor Douglas, see Nurse Margaret going to. Doctor Martin Roberts, call two one four zero. Doctor Martin Roberts, call two one four zero. Cece, I heard. I'm sorry, I heard about Kelly. I, I know how concerned you are. I just wanted you to know as a fellow father. That, how you feel? Thank you. I appreciate that. Have you got someone in the hospital? Yeah, a diver. It was helping me on the Amanda Lockery. I see. Well, I, I hope he's going to be all right. Thank you. Excuse me. Help them get Kelly through this. Don't let, don't let my daughter die. 
I love her so much. Please don't take her away from me now. Just be grateful that he's going to be all right again. I want to go down and see him this after... Oh, Santana, look. Can you imagine? It wasn't broken. That's incredible, isn't it? I still can't believe you and Dad survived this. We still have most of the roof over our heads. We'll be able to rebuild. The fire department did such a good job. Oh, Lord, would you look at this? Gina, Summer... Hi. Hi. I'm so glad to see you. Hi. I'm sorry. I'm filthy. Oh, no, that's all right, Santana. I just can't thank you enough for taking such good care of Brandon and for, for keeping him safe. Oh, well, he looks all right to me. Yes. How are you, Brandon? Fine. But this is a mess. <laughs> yeah, it is, isn't it? Well, Mama, you know uh, Gina DeMont, and this is her sister, Summer Blake. My mother, Russell Andrade. <laughs> so pleased to meet you, dear. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no, please, we understand. I'm just glad that your Brandon wasn't here when it exploded. Oh, yes, thank God. Oh, Danny. Uh, have you met uh, Gina DeMont and her sister, Summer Blake? Hi. Hi. And, nice uh, to meet you. You know Brandon? Well, nice to meet you, too. Um, please, let us help him pitch in, all right? <laughs> well, uh, sure. Where can we start? I have to. <laughs> oh, okay. listen, I wouldn't hear of it. <laughs> That's very sweet of you guys. But, uh, listen, first of all, you have to be dirty to uh, work in this house, so forget it. <laughs> uh, Danny, you want to take Brandon outside so he doesn't get hurt? Oh, sure. Be glad to. <laughs> Come on, big guy. Uh, hey, you want to help me look for my soccer ball? Okay, you have one? Yeah. Let's go. What a terrible thing oh, that happened boy. to your home. Oh, it could have been worse, Summer. We were lucky. Look at this. Oh, well, I'm sorry there's no place to sit down. Oh, no, that's all right. Did you feel the quake in Los Angeles? Yes, it was even scary there. But I did get my business done. I'm afraid I'm going to have to sell the house in Bel Air. Stockman's creditors must be satisfied. Oh, Gina, I'm very sorry. Well, he did leave some money, though. It's uh, in trust for Brandon, but that can't be touched until Brandon's much older. So I guess I'm going to brush up on my shorthand and typing. Boy, that must really be a shock to you. No, actually not really. I mean, I think you get spoiled when you have too much. I really do. Uh, so I'm just going to have to learn to cope with this kind of thing again. <laughs> I mean, I think it'll be good for me. I've been down before. Oh, believe me, I have been... You don't want to get into all that right now? Well, I wasn't going to say anything. Uh, Summer thinks I talk too much sometimes. Well, where, uh, where are you and Brandon going to be living? Well, we uh, would like to stay in Santa Barbara if we could find an apartment, but that's if the earthquake left any apartment standing. Uh, if you like, there's an apartment vacant in my building. I can show it to you. Uh, it's a very nice neighborhood. It's wonderful. You know, Santana, I feel so close to you. We've become such good friends in, in such a short time. I'm very grateful for it. Yes, so am I. Dad, I'm willing and able to take over Peter's uh, responsibilities at Capital Hotels. Can't ask you to do that. But I don't want to. I'm not going to refuse me, are you? No, how could I? Look, it's an important position. It'll be a challenge. All right, daughter, you're on. Thanks, Dad. Look, I think I'm going to stop in and say hello to Ruben. Okay. Mr. Capwell. Hello, Ruben. How are you feeling? Much better, thank you. Tell me about Kelly. How is she? She's still in surgery. We don't know how things are going to work out. There are times when man is powerless. I've known the same frustration many times. I'm afraid I haven't learned how to live with that. I'm glad you stopped in. I want you to know I know about Santana's child. What? The fact that you and I share a grandchild. 
Santana told me, and I'm very grateful to him. It must have come as a great shock to you. I've thought many thoughts, angry thoughts. Angry at myself because Santana couldn't confide in me. Angry at you because of the way you handled things back then. But now, those feelings are mixed with joy and pride and love. You and I share a grandchild. Yes. I hope that you and I and Santana will have the courage to stand back and let Mrs. DeMott raise her own child. Do you think we can do that? Lockridge? Yes, Doc. Your diver is out of surgery now. I think he's going to just be just fine. Okay, uh, can you tell me how long he'll be convalescing? Well, I imagine we'll have him out of here within uh, two weeks. Thank you. Dr. George Haskell called radiology. Dr. George Haskell... Oh, nurse. Can you tell me where the uh, hospital chaplain is? Uh, yes, sir. Go well, straight down the corridor, turn left. It's the second door. It's Mark Chapel. Thank you. Now that Dad's gone, we're going to have to do everything we can to make sure Mom's all right. She's afraid of losing the house now. Not much money coming in. Well, we'll make sure that doesn't happen. What should we do? Well, the first thing I can do is I can get a job. I've been the biggest financial strain on the family. I can make it up to her somehow. No, I don't have to go to Lyme and Prep either. Yeah, but since Mom works in the cafeteria there, it doesn't cost us all that much. You know, the reason she got the job was because she and Dad wanted you to go there. I think you should finish up. So do I. Besides, I've got a temporary job, and I'm looking for something permanent. Peter Flint may never make it back to his old job. Yeah, I've heard. Well, I'm a bright kid. I can find something. Don't you worry. I'll find something. I've always worked. The three of us will be all right. And among all of us, we'll make sure that Mom's okay. She's not worried about anything, all right? All right. Right. Okay, then. One for all and all for one. You betcha. <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh, we've got to go home. Yeah, let's go. All right, go ahead. I'll see you later, too. Okay. Joy, I hope Kelly's going to be okay. You will, you'll let us know if you hear anything. As you know, Kelly's asked that the cocaine charges against should be dropped. In deference to her wishes, I'm arranging for it. Thank you. Not a gesture of friendship. It's for Kelly. It's a matter of justice. I never had anything to do with that cocaine. But I do appreciate you doing this. You know, Kelly realized that I'm innocent. I hope that someday you can come to that realization, too. Peter says you tried to kill him. <laughs> but why? He set me up for that meeting. He sent me a fake note to get me there, and once I showed up, he started shooting at me. 
He chased me all over that wildlife refuge trying to kill me. And after he had me cornered and he thought I couldn't fight back anymore, do you know what he said to me? What? He said that he knew that I had nothing to do with Channing's death. And what's more, he's known it all along. Well, I wouldn't count on him saying that in court. I doubt very much Peter's going to be able to help you clear yourself. <laughs> There's more than that. He also admitted that he was the one who framed me with that cocaine. And then he called the police with an anonymous tip telling them where to find it. Well, that puts you in a precarious position, doesn't it? You need Peter's testimony, and from what the doctors tell me, he may not live long enough to repeat any of it. I'd like to hear it for myself, though. I think I'll go see what Peter has to say. Oh, come on, Mason. You know as well as I do that Peter is not going to cooperate in this. He just told me a few minutes ago that the only person he's going to talk to is Kelly, and I can't trust him to tell her the truth. It's useless. The whole damn thing is useless. Augusta doesn't believe that about us any longer. Something happened to us during the earthquake. You mean the earthquake, uh, act of God, restored her faith in you? I mean that while we were together waiting to be rescued, I told her everything. I told her the truth. Everything? You told her all of it? That's right. You told her that you were sending me messages and gifts? You told that to her? I said enough to convince her that she didn't need to worry about my loyalty or my love for her. I want to know what you were going to tell me about my mother. Before the earthquake hit, you said you had something to say to me about her. Yes, I did, but I don't remember. I think you do. You said you had a confession to make to me. I want to know what it is. You're right. I did. But now I'm not going to tell you. I changed my mind. Why? You've been after me for this confession, haven't you? Yes, I want it. I mean, for weeks. You've been after me for weeks, working on it. I don't know what you mean. Well, you don't. I think you do. I think that, that you did everything that you could think of. That you placed that bathing suit in my house. You appeared to the grave, right? All in the hopes that you could, I don't know, break me down. I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't know such things. It's no good lying to me. I'm not lying. I don't, I don't want you thinking that you can influence me at all. I mean, it's true, I left messages for you, I, I left you gifts. I still think that you're in a very exciting and beautiful woman. But I belong to one woman, my wife. I only want the truth from you. I want to know what you were going to tell me that night. Do you know the reason that you almost got to me? It's because you remind me so much of your mother. But your tricks aren't going to work anymore. I'm not going to be driven crazy by a bathing suit or <laughs> appearing at grave sites. I, I, I don't believe in ghosts, and I will not be driven crazy by ghostly I apparitions. I give you my solemn word. Don't even waste your time tonight. It won't do any good. Just so you know that I... I don't believe you anymore, okay? So, that's all I have to say to you. It's over. No, I'm sorry, Lionel, it's not. No, I'm not out of your system, I know it. I know it. to be sharing your well water with us. We're lucky it's still working. Don't give me credit for the water. Thank my mother-in-law. Bless you, Mrs. Lockridge. Oh, please. <laughs> well, after this is over, they'll probably make you a saint. Too late. I'm already a saint. I must say, word is spreading fast about the well. Well, isn't that what we wanted? Yes, but I didn't contemplate having to be out there pouring all the water. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, I guess that's about it for now, I hope. I must admit you ladies have held up great. I am beat. Well, I've always said women are stronger than men. 
Yes, ma'am. Well, this is one strong woman who's ready to sit down. Oh, oh no. Hello? Hmm. I just wanted to stop by and see that everyone was all right. And it uh, looks like you are. Yes, we're just fine. Um, oh, Summer Blake, this is my mother-in-law, Mrs. Lockridge. This is Summer Blake. She's a friend of Warren's. Oh, a friend of Warren's? Well, how do you do? Very fine. It's nice to meet you, Mrs. Lockridge. Gina Warren has given me a tour of your home and shown me all of your beautiful paintings. I hope nothing was terribly damaged. They're all so wonderful. Well, it's nice to know that they were appreciated. None of the pictures were badly damaged. Oh, good. I'm glad. Is Warren around? Is he all right? Well, he's just fine, but I don't have any idea of where he is. He went out somewhere. Do you have any idea when he'll be home? <laughs> no, none. Okay, well, uh, would you just tell him that I stop by when you see him? Uh, well, I'll, I'll try to remember. But I don't know when he's coming back. I have no idea. Peter? Peter, it's Mason. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good. I came to tell you that I've had the cocaine charges against Joe Perkins dropped. Mm. Can you hear me? Mm. Yeah. That's good. I also came to tell you that Joe says you set him up and tried to kill him. You said that? That's right. And I believe him, Peter. I think it came as a big shock to you when you found out Joe was alive. But the setup didn't work, did it, Peter? Like most of your plans, it went awry. Peter, are you awake? Yeah, I hear you. That's better. I don't want you falling asleep on me. I'm awake. Good. Mason, why are you here? To tell you that if you want to salvage any shred of decency, Peter, you'll tell me what you know about Channing's death before you die. I... I'm gonna die, yes. I hope the doctors are wrong, Peter. But they all seem to think that it's only a matter of hours. So if you have any regard at all for your immortal soul, you'll confess. That's what? You know who killed Channing, Peter? Did Joe Perkins do it? Or did somebody else? Did you actually see who did it? Mason, go away. I'm not dead yet. Just leave me alone. Now, Peter, I know we've never been friends. But I'm doing this for your own good. You don't want to die with the lie on your conscience. Why not make a clean breast of it? No. Mm. Talk to Kelly, Mason. Only Kelly. That's no good, Peter. Kelly's not here to talk to you. I am. Joe says uh, Kelly might die. That's right. They don't know if she's going to make it. If Kelly dies. Uh, everything that I know is going to go with her. Doctor, how is she? She survived the operation. We were able to uh, control the internal bleeding. Thank God. Her heart and seems stronger, her liver and kidneys are functioning real fine. Suzanne I think, Schultz, come to think the she stands a good chance. Suzanne Thank you, Doc. Come to the Mason, the doctor says that Kelly's chances are good. Good. She's going to be all right, I'm sure. Listen, she's a capo, she's tough. How is she? She's all right so far. She made it through the operation, at least. I'm optimistic. Thank God.
Here it is. This is what I was looking for, Kat. This? Yeah. It's mom's. I saved it all this time. You're going to wear this? Yeah. Why not? <laughs> well, I don't know. It just seems kind of funny you're wearing her clothes. I like it. Don't you think she'd want me to? Stop. Yeah, okay. Listen, I'm going to lock with Charles to get some water. I know. Don't go. Why not? We need some. Um, uh, I'll go. What's gotten into you, Eden, huh? You're making absolutely no sense at all. Oh, come on, Teddy. Have I ever made sense? Got to quit her. She's going to be just fine. Yes, I know she will. Cece, it's been a terrible time for you, hasn't it? I guess we're all lucky to be alive. How's Brandon? Oh, he's fine. Thanks to Mason and Santana. Santana's just taking wonderful care of him. She's been marvelous in every way, actually. She was a very good friend to me in South of France. Santana has many fine qualities. Yes, uh, C.C., I know you and Santana were very close for a while, but I gather that it's a thing of the past? Yes. Actually, she's seeing my son. Well, how did things go for you in Los Angeles? Oh, fine. I have the house listed with the agent you recommended. He's optimistic. This has been very difficult for you, too, hasn't it? I think you know. You must have gone through hell, too, when your wife died. It's really something, isn't it? To have someone for so many years, and, and then suddenly they're gone. They're just gone. Yes. You don't know how much it helps me. You're knowing how I feel. I don't feel quite so alone. It's almost as if you're with me when you're not. Am I making any sense? I think so. I hope so. But Cece, I'm very... Very great. Yeah, uh huh? Hello? Mason, hi. Hi yourself. Hello, Danny. Huh? Welcome to Emerald City. <laughs> Quite a sight. I think I've got some good news, though. Well, that's a nice change. What? They brought Kelly through surgery. It looks like she's got a chance. Oh, Mason, that's great. Mm -hmm. It certainly is. What? Well, uh, <laughs> hey, I'm really happy for you. I give you a big hug, but I'm a little bit of a mess. I don't mind a mess now and then. <laughs> well, you certainly came to the right place for it. Oh, you should have seen it before we started. I did a lot of work in here. <clears throat> uh, listen, we have made a difference. Yeah, and if we had a thousand more of me, it would have been done hours ago. Well, you at least got uh, one more to help now. <laughs> uh, Mason, listen, you're not really dressed for this. Oh, you're wrong. These are now my digging through the rubble clothes. You really are wonderful. I know. Thank you. You're pretty wonderful yourself. Oh, don't be silly. I look terrible. Yeah, you do. Not to me, you don't. Danny, come help yeah, me. Yeah, Ma. Oh, Mason, I didn't know you were here. Hi, Rosa. Yeah, he's pitching in. You are? Why not? No reason. Do you have any word from Kelly yet? Mm-hmm. They say she's got a good chance now. Oh, Mason, I'm so glad. I prayed for her. I know you did. Danny? Yeah, Ma. What does he want me to do? And it better not weigh more than 50 pounds. It may weigh maybe 100 pounds? Oh, no. We've got to go to the Lockridge's and get some water. Okay. See you later, Mason. Tana, here. Do a good job while I'm gone, okay? Get out of here. So long, Danny. Bye. Uh, Mama was really worried about Kelly. She loves her a lot. I know she does. She practically raised her. Uh, Have you, uh... Thought any more about what we talked about? Uh, yeah. Of course I have. Do you think I'd forget something like a marriage proposal? I would hope not. Yeah. I've thought about it a great deal. I have some other arguments to persuade you, in case my loving you isn't enough. I want you to think about what I can give you. The kind of life you'd want, all the freedom you'll need, and, uh, more adoration than you could ask for. <sighs> That's very impressive. There's more. If you want to have kids, I'm all for it. If you want to wait a while to start a family, I can wait as long as you can. There's only one thing that I'm impatient about. Mace, I... Yeah. I think I ought to be honest with you. Uh, my feelings are a little mixed up right now. All right, tell me how you feel. Uncertain. About me? No, 
about everything. I feel very lucky to have someone like you care for me. Oh, you are? I mean it. I look at you differently now. I like the man that I see. Do you? Mm-hmm. Very much. And I like uh, your fighting for your independence from your father. My father, I can do without. You, I can't. Well, that's a big responsibility. I think some of your confusion might be that you have some residual feeling for my father. Forgive me, I didn't mean to intrude. Hello, mm. come on in. Mason was just telling me about Kelly. Santana, I didn't realize that this was such a close call that your parents had. Yeah, it was a pretty big explosion. Obviously. Well, we'll have it cleaned up eventually. Mason, would you mind if I spoke with Santana alone for a few minutes? You're welcome to talk to her. Why do I have to leave? I would prefer it if you did. It's all right, Mason. Go ahead. All right. I'll see you tonight. Well... I would like to apologize. For what? For misjudging you so badly. I was convinced that you were going to tell Gina that you were Brandon's real mother and make life hell for her. And I was also afraid that you might take him away physically. You did make reservations to Rio. Yes, I did. Well, I was wrong and unjust to you. Do you trust me now? I just hope that we haven't said things in the heat of anger that might not let us be friends in the future. Yeah, I certainly hope not. You know, Brandon and uh, Gina are going to be moving to Santa Barbara. Now we'll both be involved in their lives. Oh, you don't like the thought of that. I didn't say that. Well, I think I've certainly earned the right to be friends with Gina and Brandon, don't you? Santana, through all of this, I think you've been very brave. Cece, there are things that you're just not saying to me. Oh, I don't think so. We both want what is right for Brandon, don't we? Of course. <laughs> We're all very fortunate that you're willing to do this. Uh, right on it. It's our pleasure, man. Ah, well, just load me up. I'm a beast of burden. <laughs> he has the talent for it. Oh, look at that. My own mother turns on me. Come on, Miss Lake. I'm going to Um, like everyone else, I think it's very nice that you're doing this. We do try to help the needy. You're being very neighborly. I heard some people are trying to sell their water. People do try to capitalize on other people's misfortunes. It's very gratifying to know that we can help in a crisis. Seems like everybody's depending on us. It's kind of a good object lesson in making enemies. Sometimes you don't know when you're going to need them as friends. Yes, indeed. I'd like to talk. Rick, would you take this? Oh, sure. Be glad to. I'm sure you thought you were being very clever the other night at the museum. Really? Why? When you were telling me about the woman my husband was seeing. <laughs> I just never thought it would be you. It was a little trick you used to get me off the track, wasn't it? I did nothing of the kind. I'm not seeing Lionel. But it's not because you wouldn't like to. You've just simply lost out with him. You see, I know the whole story. He told me everything. Then you know that there was nothing between us. I can't understand why you're still upset. Do I look upset? Well, I'm not. A little angry, maybe. Angry, then. You have nothing to be angry about. I never encouraged Lionel for a second. We did not have an affair. You have nothing in the world to worry about. No, I don't. Good, then you're a lucky woman. A lot luckier than the rest of us. Capitalists have a lot to worry about. Anything else you want to say to me? No, that's all. Excuse me. Well, sir? Uh, 
Uh, I'll walk with you. Oh, here oh, she goes. Thank you. Is that uh, mine too? Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, thanks again for the water. If there's anything we can do for you, just call us, okay? Thanks, Danny. Come back whenever you need to. Okay. Stan? Yeah, Warren, I'm here. Look, I want to talk to you, all right? Sure. Look, I got something for you. These. What's that? Your precious coins. They belong to you, remember? I dug them up and brought them back because I thought you should have them. You gave them to Sophia once. Perhaps you'd like to give them to Mom now, huh? Or maybe throw them away or take them out and bury them yourself. Whatever you want, I could care less. Do you mind telling me why you're so angry? Because those damn things have been a curse to all of us, just like your relationship with Sophia Capwell. I tell you one thing, Dad. If you don't do something about those coins, we're going to have even more problems of a much worse nature, I might add. Me, I've had it with them. I mean, they've practically ruined my life. And I don't want to have anything else to do with them, okay? Warren, if you would calm down for a No, I don't want to able... talk about it, all right? I want to wash my hands of the whole thing. Warren, wait a minute! It's always a good sign when we're released from intensive care. Are we comfortable? Yeah, I guess. Good. I'll be back to check on you in a few minutes. Don't stay too long. I Better. Oh, Kelly. I was so scared. So was I. But you're gonna be all right now. Because we're married. I could never leave you, Joan. And he seems to be slipping toward death any time. I wish I could give you some kind of encouragement, but I can't. I see no hope at all. Um, may I talk to him? I don't think that would be reasonable at this point, uh, under these circumstances. And uh, he is so weak at this point. Well, I won't tire him out. In fact, I think it could help him. I don't think anything is going to help now. Go ahead. You talk to him, but be careful. Thank you. Dr. Vivian, Dr. John Vivian, report to X-ray. Peter, are you awake? Peter? I have some good news for you, Peter. Kelly's alive. She's going to be all right. She made it through... So you have to hang on, too. She'll be here in a little while. She will. That's right, Peter. She wants to see you, so don't let her down. If she made it, you can, too. Oh, baby. You're lying. Oh, it's true, Peter. Wait a minute. I'll get a doctor, and he'll tell you himself. Nothing's wrong. I just want you to repeat for Mr. Flint's benefit what you told me about my sister. He says that Kelly's alive. Yes, yes, that's true. Uh, she survived the operation, and we have every reason to suspect that she's going to uh, recover completely. There, you see, Peter? That's good. I thought that would make you feel better. So Kelly is going to make it. That's right. I talk to Kelly. What I'm going to tell her, it's going to shock everybody. What are you doing here? 